Hi Divas, I have a stitchery treat for you today. These are from Embroitopia. Embroitopia. I will link their site down below. It's been a long time since I've embroidered, so I wanted to make sure that I knew that I knew what I was doing. It's been a while since I did any embroidery, so and I've been trying to do little things, trying to catch up on the kits that I have uh, started and, and put away for a while. I'm trying to get things finished that I started. <clears throat> I will have another video to come soon of showing you all the different kits that I already have that this will be added to and how I store them and some of the things I've been working on. Uh, one or two finished projects and things I uh, have yet in that grouping to do. So I can't wait to show you that. I like to do some of the embroidery over the summer when I don't want something hot and heavy on my lap to work on. <clears throat> Since I do diamond painting on my lap, usually on a big heavy easel. <laughs> anyway, these are from Embroitopia. And these are cool because they're like, they have a whole bunch of different ones, but they have sample kits. And what they are, let me see if I can bring you in a bit, is they give you some practice stitches. And then they give you uh, something to do with those practice stitches, how to combine them into a little picture. And that is one of the sample things that they, that they um, show you lots of different ones. I picked it by the sample stitches that I wanted to learn, to relearn. This, they call it Embroidery Dictionary. And these are some of the same ones, but different, also different um, stitches. And I like the way these are like light bulbs that they put flowers in and uh, had some of the vines next to it. Another one, these had hearts in it. They had different kinds of leaves, so different cross hatching patterns, different types of French knots, and they made it into a little bicycle pattern here. Uh, that was pretty. And then there are three in this, and they give you a hoop to put it in as well. I've just got a whole bunch of hoops and, um, and thimbles, leather thimbles from Singer from Amazon.com and I love the leather thimbles because they have a metal pad here, they're nice and soft and they have a slit in it where your fingernail can go through. I love that. So let's open one of these kits up to see what is all in this kit. Well, baby scissors, which we don't really need. Bring it out just a little bit. I don't use those. Um, a silica gel pack, which means, you know, keep things dry and keep that away from children. You get a seam ripper in case you screw up. This is basically very sharp. It's basically for uh, when you're sewing at the sewing machine. So I'm not sure why I have, they put a seam ripper in here. I never use it for that, but thank you anyway. I'll put it with my sewing things. And this is actually... A needle threader, if you can see. It's got a wire on it. I don't know that you can see the wire. It's got a wire on it. You put the thread through the big eye of the wire. First you put it through the needle, the eye of the needle, which squeezes it down. It, it flows in there just fine. The needle's hanging on the end. You put the thread through the big eye of the needle, and then you pull the needle off of it and pull it out until you have the thread going through the needle instead of the needle, uh, the threader. So this is really cool. I like that. That I will definitely use. And they give you a plastic hoop that has a screw end on it. Obviously you unscrew it to put the fabric through it. And these are these are different than I had before. They're very they're plastic. Uh, we used to use wooden ones with a cork tightener on the inside. This looks like it has a different type of channel. Can you see that? Can you see the channel in there? This is heaped up uh, like a wider channel, and then this has an indented channel. So that the, that's how they match up. The one goes into the other with the fabric placed between it. You tighten it up a bit. You stretch the fabric until it's stretched tight, and then you 
screw it down and so that it's all nice and tight and it, the fabric does not move while you're using it. Another tool that they give you are the embroidery needles themselves, nine sharps. Are they sharps or are they tapestry? Let me see. Tapestry needles have a more blunt end to it. Like use the tapestry ones more for even weave fabric because you don't want to pierce the threads, the fabric itself. You want to go between the threads of an even weave. These are sharps. They want you to go directly through the fabric where it tells you to go, which is exactly what I would expect. So that's good on the tools. Now there are three kits inside of this. You can order them in three packs. And let's see. All right. It's one of each of those three on the front. Let's be sure we know what we get in each one. Come on. This says this one is the private garden. And this one's the underwater world. And this one is home of insects. So this would be private garden. great okay it is in English it gives you a big picture of what it will look like and then it blows up the center so that you can see exactly what it should look like there it gives you the number of strands six strands three strands four strands good 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 it tells you how many strands of each one it tells you the number the color number of what it is to be there all right good it tells you what type of stick Coral stitch, satin stitch, chain stitch, whipped back stitch, cross stitch, west wing, daisy. And then it gives you this little encyclopedia type thing of how to stitch each one. So this one says the three dimensional stitch, split line, west wing, fly, running stitch, cross stitch, blanket, closed blanket stitch. That's beautiful. And then an example of what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. Yep. All these stitches. Put it upside down for you. Here we go. That's neat. That's exactly what I wanted. It's like a sampler on how to practice those stitches. Now let's get this open. Oh, good. Okay. This gives you a palette with the color, the actual... Um, sequence number of the palette. Now does it tell you on this what the color number is? Does it translate them into DMC color numbers? No, it does not. No, it does not. So it just gives you a list of the sequence number because they believe that's all you need. So this is what you would put in the ring. It even shows you where the ring is supposed to go and you tighten it up and it's on blue stitch. Sometimes the blue stitching washes out. Let me see. Uh, pay attention to the order. Overlaps and pattern, avoid the lower part first. Do not wash before embroidery to avoid washing off the background pattern. So the background pattern is supposed to wash off afterward. It is just for reference only. Okay. Yep. Okay, it even shows you how they want you to thread the needle. Very nice. So, here is the pattern. I don't see the basket. Let me see. Huh. huh. All right. Wait a minute. All right. This is... Oh, I see. I have this upside down. Die. No wonder. This is the top of the basket. And then you do the basket weave underneath in here. Because that cross hatching is down here. See, I had it upside down. That I believe. Totally believe. See, these are the kind of things you want to check out first. To me, it looked right side up because of the heaviness at the bottom. But that's the wrong way to look at it. This is the top. 
the heaviness will be the basket at the bottom that you weave. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm eager to get to this one. I am going to fold it with that big picture on the outside. <clears throat> now, usually, if it's a washable type of picture off the canvas, you're going to have to be careful that you don't have it in a damp environment over time. The humidity of a damp environment may um, may fade the lines on it. Now I'm not getting this back in nearly the beautiful shape that it came in. But, but this is that. I want to make sure that I see this clearly. Mm. All right, that's one of the three pack. This one will be, let's see, Home of Insects. It's been a long time since I've embroidered, so I wanted to make sure that I knew that I knew what I was doing. Okay, I'm just going to take out the one paper that shows the picture on the inside. Aha! This is the home of insects. That would go, my ladybugs, my little ladybug diamond painting, and my little ladybug kind of cross stitch would go nice with this too. And by the way, ladybugs are uh, are really um, are really liked in Pennsylvania Dutch culture because they're good luck. They eat all the bad bugs off of the good plants. <laughs> so we love ladybugs. All right. If you want to know more about the Pennsylvania Dutch culture, culture, um, click on one of the links to the Kutztang Folk Festival, and I'll be taking you with me in July, 2023 and showing you all kinds of other Pennsylvania Dutch crafts that are there. Okay, so here we go. We have like fall here and we have the butterfly in the middle. We have some spring and we have some summer. Oh, I love that. I love that sunflower here. Beautiful. Nice. And it gives you a tutorial on each of the different stitches that you will need to use. Very nice. I'm going to put this with it. Put the picture out so I know which one is which, even though it does say that on it. Alright, and I'll show you the third one in this kit. This will be so much fun. Something nice and light. I can do this while I'm in, a car, in the car on a trip of some kind. I can do these while I'm waiting for the kids when they're playing outside. I can do this in, with lots of light. I can do it inside on a hot evening in front of the air conditioner. The big tall glass of iced tea. I can do it when I'm on the phone. I can do it when I'm talking to people on the phone and watching my watching YouTubes of my favorite people being on their being on their uh, watching their live chats lurking okay and this one is the undersea world isn't that pretty oh wow look at that got a dolphin got seaweed it's got other kinds of plants it's got a star shells a turtle isn't that nice very pretty very pretty. I'm looking forward to doing that as well. I'm looking forward to doing them all, really. <clears throat> and, and here, well, I'm going to show you the colors of that. All right, that's the three pack. And I want to open one of the sampler ones just to be sure. that I see I'm in very large envelopes for such a small oh, no that's why a small one I'm glad they have on the back of these they have close up of some of the satin stitches that you're supposed to do um, let's see 
I'm going to get rid of the small plastic here, I think, and just use the bigger one. Makes more sense to me. Okay. Shows you all the stitches and the stitch dictionary here. It tells you the DMC color number. Yay! <laughs> but in case you want to save the extra thread. Now this is small. This is a very small how-to page. I think what I would do is maybe blow that up. It's kind of smaller than this. It tells you what <coughs> what stitches to do and how many. Uh, let's see what the letter of it is here. It doesn't say how many strand. Okay, that's a true strand, four strand. See, I'm used to three strand, two strands for most um, most kind of cross stitch. They have the needles taped to the palette here, the color palette. Nicely arranged thread. And you have your printed on, your printed on fabric. So that's kind of neat. Okay, I'm going to be learning a lot, of, a lot of new stitches I never even knew, but I've always wanted to try. And this is in preparation, too, by the way. It's in preparation for my lifelong desire to do a big crazy quilt. I have been collecting... I have been collecting satin patches and uh, satins and velvets and all kinds of fun uh, types of fancy fabrics. I have a big box full of them, and I'm looking forward to doing a big crazy quilt with all the hand stitches. So these will be in re references for me. I don't have to take them all out, but because I, I have a whole lot I want to show you. But I imagine these are pretty much the same. Ugh, come on. Well. Yep, this is the stitch dictionary for this one. Lots of different leaf designs. 3D flower stitch. Neat. Needle circle stitch. I am no good at satin stitching. And this will be, excuse me, this will be good practice. There's your, your stitching. I really didn't think that the actual words would be embroidered on there, but as you can see, they are. And I wonder how, how does it have you do the words, the letters on them? Huh, I don't know. I'll find out when I start working on them. I'll find out. Because I would have thought that they would just wash off and then they're there for your own knowledge. Again, beautiful palette of threads. And it is easier to get it in the <laughs> get it in the bag if it's all contained within the within the paper cover here. And that is the point of the three different sample packs. All right. I also fell in love with the black background ones. It's the same company, Embroitro Embroitopia. Let me show you. This one comes with a hoop. Pretty hoop. All right. I'm going to have to cut that open. I like to put them in Ziploc baggies in. This plastic just seems to ruin everything. All right. Well, it's in a nice plastic anyway. Let's see. 
look like the same thing. It's a different company that does it, but is this a black or a dark green? Ooh. All right, here is the picture. Looks like a lot of lazy daisies and French knots and stem stitching. There's some straight stitching. It is. It's a dark green, guys. It is a dark green. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's printed. Embroidery is printed on. Cross stitch is printed on. Counted cross stitch is not. Counted cross stitch, you have to count the threads in the even weave fabric. I love that because each of your stitches come out exactly even. Where on embroidery and cross stitch, you it doesn't come out even because it depends on where you stick the needle down. This is going to be beautiful. I didn't know they were dark green. I thought they were black, which is fine. I, I like this dark green. All right, that's this one here. Let's put that back in its little pack here. And you're going to ask me what I'm going to do with these afterward. Well, like I said, I'm going to use the knowledge I gained from it to make things on a big crazy quilt. Well, I may just stitch them all into one, one big quilt of itself, you know? All right, this has, this looks like it's a pillow form. It is. This is a black pillow. Black cloth pillow. Oh, it's already stitched with the, the background. Okay, let me show you the back here. It's got the zipper already inset. And that's going to be difficult to embroider then. You can, put, you can put the hoop in here. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll bring you back out a little bit. You can put the hoop part back and part on the front. And that's the way you're going to have to embroider it. But getting in and out of the back so you don't stitch the back together as you're doing it will be uh, a challenge. But that's part of the beauty of it, right? The challenging aspect. Here is the picture of what it should look like when finished. I just think that against the, back, the black background, these colors will pop. The pinks and the yellows and the light greens are going to pop. Okay. And that's your basics. That's all it gives you as far as pattern. And it gives you big tapas uh, embroidery needles and it gives you the big palette on paper. No other instructions as to you know, DMC numbers, although it tells you how many strands of each one and what type of stitch you're supposed to use. We shall see if all the stitches are included. It comes with a pen insert. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why that comes with the pen insert. I've seen that once before in something else. Um, I don't know. I'll keep that out because I really have no idea why that's even there. All right. Put this all back in its here. <clears throat> I can get it in there without sticking it to the top of the bag here. Yeah. And here's one. This looked really pretty. Again, a black background. It looks like it is... Ah, this is a tote bag. Yes, this is a tote bag. <clears throat> okay. And this is what the tote bag will 
have on it. This blue and white. It's almost like folk art. It's almost like actually Dutch folk art. And these are the gorgeous colors. Here, come on now. Ah, oh, I got two sets of the colors, which is really nice. And they come with their own needles attached as well. Beautiful. Like I said, it'll be a little difficult with the uh, <clears throat> using the hoop with a closed item. Closed meaning it has a back to it. What I would prefer to do is, is uh, embroider the canvas and then stitch it. But I guess they have customers that don't stitch, don't use the sewing machine, and therefore that's why they do it that way. I have a few more to show you. I ordered from them at two different times. I wanted to wait for these kits to come in until the other ones came, but then when it, it ended up coming at the same time, so I thought I'd show them all to you at the same time. This one, this one is done on organza, and organza is a see-through fabric. I've done some bookmarks on organza, and they're not they are not uh, the easiest to do. Okay. This is the organza fabric. You can see that there is a pattern on it. Now, now that I took it out of the package, ouch, my hip hurts. Here, you can see it better on here. Now that I took it out of the package, the air, the moisture at the air might attack it a little bit and might fade it a bit. Can you see that pattern on there? This is what it will be. Like, um, like a Japanese screen painting. And they display it right in the hoop. That would be absolutely beautiful. I thought I think I'd like to display it in a hoop stand like that. It just would be really, really pretty. Um, it probably won't have more than one. And they give you the the needles taped to the palette, cardboard palette here. And diamond painters, no, I'm not giving up diamond painting. <laughs> I love both. I love anything I can do with my hands. I'm kind of eclectic that way. I just love doing it. But uh, I know a lot of you are diamond painters, and that's fine. But I also know a lot of you like a whole bunch of different things. And I'm trying to open you up to the world of what is possible. Pretty soon I will have a video out on... Um, What I've, some of the things I've already done and some of my stash that I have yet to do. Nice plastic hoop. And let's see. This is not organza. It's on a muslin. But it's a butterfly with peach. Just because this is a different type of kit, I want to open this one up. I think it'll be the same. Same look. Yep. Yeah got all the instructions on the inside and here is the fabric it's on a like a beige muslin an ecru that's pretty very pretty and here is the palette of shades very nice let's see this way and then this way and then this way and then this way hey I'm getting used to that <laughs> getting used to doing it that way
And this one's on blue. It comes with the hoop and palettes of threads. And it will be on a blue, a light blue background. You can barely see it, but there's a pink, there's a pink writing on it. Really big flowers, especially with the bigger flowers like this, you definitely need a hoop to do it because you don't want the, uh, the fabric being pulled all over the place as you're doing it, as you're filling it in. This will be a little tricky for sure. It won't be my first one. But again, now that I have these different ones, I can make, I can get others. I have tons of muslin. Maybe I can put my own patterns on some and practice that way. This is going to be difficult because I'm going to bring you in a little bit. See the big flowers? They just had big markings on them. They didn't have the, like, okay, here is the peach and the outside is, is the white. Um, they have three colors blending into each other in these. So you have to be careful when you're doing them to make, to, to figure out how far you want to go in with one stitch to the other. It's a lot of satin stitching. And I hope, hopefully I'm better at satin stitching by that time, by the time I do this than others. All right. Now I want to show you a different kind of, these are more needlepoint. These are more tapestry oriented. And these are from a large collection that they have of sunsets and um, national park type of things. So there are four of them, and I'm eager to see what these look like. They come in uh, like a brown envelope. The brown envelope has butterflies all over them. That's interesting. <laughs> envelope. Oh, these envelopes would be great in junk journaling, won't they? Ooh, I'll have to do these so I can use one of these neat envelopes in junk journaling. Oh, that's perfect. All right. This is what this one is going to look like. A sunset over some pine trees. It's called, no, I don't know what this one is called. I will put a link down below to some of these things. It gives you the, the how to put it into the hoop, which you don't get with it, but that's fine. How to thread the needle, and it gives you all kinds of different ideas on the types of stitchings that you'll be doing. On here, it tells you which stitch, back stitch, ninth color, six strands. So it points to it on here. So let's take a look at the actual canvas. <gasps> okay. Mm. It's got a little fuzziness in the center. Almost like it was like silk printed. Weird. It's got perfectly patterned out here and down here, but right through the center, fuzzy. Can you see that? Can you see that fuzziness in the middle? This will be a challenge, especially after you put all the, the background stitching in and then you have to put the French knots. Do I put the French knots and the bullion roses on there, the spiderweb rose on there first? All right. Huh. Okay. It tells you that you can, after you're finished with it, leave it in the hoop frame and put it in water and then let it naturally dry and that will get rid of the blue, any of the blue ticking marks. Okay, well, that's going to be interesting for sure. And the needles are up here, attached to the fabric. 
and I got that wrong here, here, here. This way. And here is the palette of colors. Beautiful colors. I like the vividness of the colors. Very, very pretty. And let's see. One last question. No, it does not give me a DMC color code number on these. That's a shame. All right. Put it back in its envelope for now. No, you know what? I don't need the envelope. <laughs> these go right with my junk journal stuff. You know where that's going. I will put it in here because I do not need the envelope when I have this plastic one. <laughs> Very cool. All right, that's one. I'm going to do that to all four before I put them away. And then I'm going to get out my collection that I've already started and show you in a different video all the stuff that I have ready to work on. Another envelope. For the junk journal. Okay, look how gorgeous this night sky is. Wow. Now let's see that without all the red lines into it. Isn't that pretty? Oof. It is a blue meadow under a night sky. Okay. And that was a mistake in the other canvas, the blurriness. This is the, I got it upside down here for you. There's no blurriness to this pattern. This is on your regular duct canvas. Very nice feel to it. Very soft, um, very nice feel to the canvas. I think I will ask them about the the other one, the blurriness, and show them and see if they can't send me a different one. All right, isn't that pretty? The color palette, the yellows and blues and reds. Ooh, love it, love it. All righty. Okay. It's this one. I'm gonna hold the first one out. And okay. <clears throat> out of the envelope. This one is Mountains with Sunflowers. And it had a big variety of colors and different scenes that you could choose from. Oh, that's nice. Okay. <laughs> this fabric was the end of a fabric because you could tell it's not on grain and it's got uh, the selvage. This was like an end of one bolt, the beginning of another where they stitch them together where they're pulling it through the, the machine to weave it. Anyway, it's got beautiful printing on it. Beautiful printing on it. Nice and dark. Yeah, see, I can see, even see that some of the machine dirt on the back of that. I think I'm going to tell them about that, too. I don't think it'll affect the, the actual stitching much, but I just want to let them know that, it's, that it happened. And this is beautiful. Look at the palette. Oh, it's got some thick, fuzzy white yarn to it. Where's that? Oh, that's the clouds. The thicker. The rest is embroidery floss. This isn't. This is a, a yarn, a puffy yarn. Beautiful. That's neat for the clouds. Look how pretty the colors are going to be for the flowers. The rose color here. And then the sunflower colors. Oh, how pretty. I did not know it came with, oh, and it came with the plastic tapestry needle with the blunt end and a huge eye. That is for, 
undoubtedly that is for the the uh, cloud, the puffy cloud color. I'm going to put that right in there. All right, so I'm going to talk to him about this one as well. It just looks so beautiful to me. As I can imagine, using these in that quilt as well, but cutting them in squares instead of circles, or embroider, um, stitching them down to squares. Crazy quilt with other embroidery squares in it. Ooh, that might be an idea we're looking into. All right, this one's a little damp. All right, and this last one is the Northern Lights over an orange field. Field of orange. Maybe roses or poppies. Look at the northern lights going through the top of that. Beautiful, beautiful. <sighs> this color palette is, is fluorescent. It's like flame. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Plus the dark of the sky. Wow. This would have been nice on a dark fabric too. It is on a white duct. And this is how the canvases should be. Nice and flat. That's going to be intricate, guys. It's going to be intricate, but it will be beautiful. Beautiful. Huh. All right, so uh, two were fantastic and two were iffy. All right, I'm going to contact them and see if they would like to do something about that and then I will give you an update on the end of this. I will make sure I update you on their customer service. Let's see if I can get a hold of them. Embroitopia. I will leave links in the links in the description box below to any discounts I can wrangle from them or any uh, information and links to the kits below that you can get your own. Like I said, there are many different kinds of kits available from Embroitopia. All right, Divas. I'll see you soon. Bye.